Welcome back, everybody. It is a Friday again. It seems to happen every week. It's the 26th of August again. They keep coming. And we're back in the canyon. We're doing canyon things. And unlike most days where I focus like a laser on a specific task until it's complete. No, no, I don't. It's a miracle anything around here ever gets done at all. So this morning I did what I always do, which is putter around, bouncing from task to task. Like, look, that pile of logs is gone. Nope, no, it's just, it's just over there now. This pile of rocks has gotten slightly larger. This pile of rocks has gotten slightly larger. I can actually see the bottom of this dang old water. I went here, I went there, I sprayed things with air. I sprayed some of the same things and some other things with water. But perhaps more importantly, beyond uh, Jake the Snake attempting to muscle his way into the Invitational, but being eliminated by Jolly Green in elimination number two and making quite a bit of headway on the currently unnamed Marlin build, I did what I never do which is I turned my attention towards a rig that needs it perhaps more than any other. So first to be eliminated from the Invitational was this little fella, the Jimny, who, I mean, you can see, he, he's not, let's say he's not hyper capable. He is, however, the recipient of some attention during the week he got, as you can see, new tires and new wheels. For whatever reason, I got the uh, identical Mickey Thompson Baja MTZs 1.55s for a steal. And the uh, the wheels, I think the wheels were like $18 for the set of steel beadlocks. And I, I don't know, I, I think, I guess, I guess I'm a black steely guy because I like them better than the gunmetal ones. The other ones are still mounted up. You don't really have a home. The tires definitely need to break in. I think the uh, some of the increase in ability, like ordinarily he would just sit on anything and go shudder, shudder, shudder. But I can actually, I can actually climb up stuff now. So he's a, a slight bit more of a rock crawler now. And a big part of that is thanks to the Marlin, because little fellow was running 80 weight oil in his MST hop-up shocks, which was the heaviest weight I had. And the Marlin brought me to the realization, something I had never paid attention to at all, which is that associated differential oils, the number on the back of the bottle is not weight. It is, it is CST, Centistokes, and they are very different things. For point of reference, 40 weight silicone shock oil is a, it, it varies by manufacturer, but let's let's stick with associated. Uh, 40 weight silicone shock oil is 500 CST. So I have bottles of all the, what I thought were weights as I bought them back in the rip around four wheel drive days. So I've got 3,000, 5,000, 7,000, 10,000, all the way up to 100,000. I think I've got a little one of those little putty containers of million. But the thing is, as you go through the different manufacturers, some of them are weight and some of them are centistokes. And my 3,000, 5,000, and 7,000 being associated, they are not weight, they are centistokes. So what I thought was 3,000 weight is actually 3,000 CST, which is 240 weight. So the shocks in this rig are currently 240 weight oil in them. And it seems to be pretty much perfect. Like it, eh, like ordinarily, that's a roll. Like he's he's going down fast and ugly from that, but he's holding it. Didn't mess with the shock springs. It's just newer tires, very little tweaking at all. I think his front pumpkin angle needs a little bit of tweak. Let's see if we can get out of this without going over. Yeah, that's, that's the heavy weight. And I was, okay, yeah, well, the heavy weight, I was a person that would, that 
prior to the arrival of the Marlin, I never would have thought, oh, let's throw some 240 weight in those shocks. But here we sit, nevertheless. The new tires help. I was informed by the kind channel viewer who sent me the original Baja MTZs. I was so excited to take them out of the package. Uh, <laughs> I mounted them up and uh, they were featured in, in a video shortly thereafter. And they emailed me and they were like, you know I put those old tires in there as like packing material. I never intended you to use those tires. But if you send me an RC car part, I'm gonna use it. So the little fella, as most do, uh, yeah, two wheel motion, gets substantial changes to set up after he's been elim eliminated from competition. That's kind of that's how we do it. The 55 turn hobby park is pretty good. So he's still a little, little bit of rollback. I have another 55 turn because they were so cheap. When I bought the 45 turn for the RC four wheel drive, I bought a 55 turn at the same time in case the 45 wasn't slow enough. So there's a possibility this guy could audition the other 55 turn for a comparo of cheap 55 turn versus cheap 55 turn. I think one was 16 and the other was, that hobby park might have been $14 for a rebuildable, you know, Mabuchi style 540. Oh, come on. Hey. He's not much bigger than that old... Oh, here we are. See, this is what happens. I don't look. He's not much bigger than that uh, ancient Tonka dump truck that I literally dug out of the ground. And now, we are going to get to a portion where I am going to attempt... Oh? Yeah, 240 weight. 240... So good. Yeah, not a... Whoa! Hey, that, that landed in my hands. So shortly here, we we're going to do another round of... That was nice. That was nice, Jimmy. Little fella, that was nice. Boy, he will, he will pick that front end up. It's just... It's wildly more stable with that shock oil in there. It really, it handles like a different vehicle. Okay, okay may, maybe he doesn't need more drag brake. Because that is, that's hooked in. Rawr. He still has an awfully high CG. I used the battery tray, the existing battery tray, out of a sort of like, well, this is easy thinking about seeing if he has enough room between the fenders and whatnot to affix the battery to the top of the servo, which would, I think, move a lot of his weight down and see what happens there. But before any of that happens, I think I got halfway through a sentence about Carl Kane and crowdsourcing. So what's up fairly mostly next on the docket is the beginning of the Triforce round that is the invitational finals because it's three, three, count them three, six gates with cumulative points so somebody can have a bad day and they're not just out. So all nine run all three parts. So that's how that's going to work. They're probably going to be split up into, I'm, I'm going to say groups of three. Three seems convenient. So it'll be three groups of three. And they won't, it won't always be the same three. It's just that three will come out and run because they're basically not running against each other. They're running against themselves. So I feel like that's more like golf. So where this was, uh, where this was going. Oh, can I make it down this? No. Where this was going is I want y'all's help in choosing the venue for the first of the three six gates. As I would like to confine it to a single obstacle 
section, like a named section. We'll start here with uh, a frequent appearance in the videos. This is, of course, Drybone Valley. Drybone Valley extends over there. Slick Rock is included. So it would go from just where that red hose is to over there, including the tunnel and go over. This is essentially where elimination two was never held. So option one, Drybone Valley. Option number two is this whole complex, just known as Undertaker. Uh, everything from the wood all around that rock there. It's been a frequent appearance. Let's just drop the radio that far. Everybody knows it, but it's easy to get to, so it's always an option. Option number three is pretty much the original, the OG super complex that is precious stones and ancient kingdom. It's essentially everything that goes around the oasis, everything under this tree. So it's been featured before, uh, the original cliffy side hill is part of it. The rebuilt, or should I say reburied, uh, we tried for a red menace. We ended up with a pink nightmare. Uh, now we have the, <laughs> its condition is still the chalky nightmare, but it's part of it. The bridge is in it. Everything up to, you know, like where the, is that a pagoda? Where the pagoda is. If you go beyond that, you're in Sleeping Giant, which is this whole complex here. Oh, come on. Come on, you little guy. So Sleeping Giant has been featured. Sleeping Giant essentially features everything all inside the pipe right here. So the bridge, the high wall up there, the tunnel. Uh, yes, right over there. That's the beast, but the beast is part of Sleeping Giant. And I have had a round here, but we don't roll anything out. We could have another. So that is option four. Lost count. Option number five. We have, we've all been here before. This is Oblivion. Oblivion essentially contains Everything from that cat uh, around over to um, there, where that section of concrete you can't really see it because there's a there's a there's a drop off there where there's a walkway, but everything from this side is oblivion, and we tend to just operate on the front side here as it's the part that's easier to get to and it's had more work put into it. Well, you're doing, you're doing, you're having a good day, little fella. But Oblivion also, if he can make it up this, Oblivion also contains everything under here, uh, including this sweet, if treacherous bridge, which is a, a it's a strange animal because uh, on the rare times it rains, when the bridge gets wet, it gets super tight. You'd think it'd be the other way around. Like, it's perfectly level. But we're midsummer here, so it's pretty drowsy down. There's a lot of spider webs. There's a lot of loose terrain. Oh, no. Come on, get out of there. He is having a banner day. And there's also this. So, Ob Oblivion is now truly a super complex. Get up. Get up! Uh, as you can see, uh, the little fella, I, I don't know if there's a, even a... Uh, I don't even know if there's a line that he can get up there. This is where the canyon starts to get treacherous. After Oblivion, we have Leviathan, which is very, very much under construction but there are some parts of it that are still very usable they were featured prominently in the raid they were built shortly 
I want to say this was built during the raid. Oh. But we'll get a better little look at the stuff that's... Wow, he went through there. I was going to say he went through there like nothing, but now he's completely stuck. As Leviathan is midway through a redo, this is all recently done. This just has almost no fill into it, so this is proper treachery out here. As when this sharp stuff is all loose and not set in, uh, this is how you break a capper axle. It also, it makes a course pretty much different for everyone that touches it because you can blast stuff around. But Leviathan, oh, oh. Definitely not off the table. It's possible. What, what, do, you, what do you think, fella? Is this, is, this, is this terrain you would like to try? If not Leviathan, we move on next to Roots Remain, which is everything under here. From, from where the block comes all the way around. All of this is Roots Remain. And while it is a bit more trailing oriented over here than some others. I can't see where I am. He is just, he, he's out on a cobweb busting mission. He's grabbing all the spider webs. As I say, all of, all of the logs are in it. Everything over to the bridge is Roots Remain, which also includes the steps here which is another section. I don't know if a uh, little fella can get up on breach, breach, come on. One, one, this is not 155 territory. Hey, look at, look at him go. Look at that little fella go. He's, he spies himself a massive net of cobwebs and, and he, he seeks it out. Come on, you little guy. This is Roots Remain. Here comes the Jeej. As you see, she hasn't gotten... That cat right there, coming straight to the camera, is a part hobbit because she has to have at least three breakfasts followed by 11 Zs. Yeah, get those cobwebs. So all this is in play in Roots Remain. I think, I think he's pretty well stuck. So we'll move on to the next one, which only gets rougher, which is right across the hall in Savage Lands, which is completely unset in as it's the furthest from things like water and electricity. It are, they are truly Savage Lands. And this complex extends just about as far as the eye can see. It begins over here, that entire wrap is part of it, all the way around. And if you can just see bridge number two, it has the contraption, which was that thing, uh, that, that bit half buried there. All of this, all of the stuff that looks like a volcano, both bridges, everything is all part of Savage Lands. It's very unset in the playground concrete, I'm sorry, the playground asphalt, that composes the, the bulk of Savage Lands is absolutely melting in the summer heat, just crumbling away. So this is one of the intended locations for more fill. But we haven't gotten there because it's hot. As soon as you pop out of the bridge, you enter the penultimate option for venue, Sultan's Curse which is jagged, dusty, slippery, filled with murder holes, and just an all-around terrifying place. But it's absolutely an option. Look at, I'm, I'm gonna have to, he's, here he goes. Hey, he spied another one. Oh, that was really good for this guy. Look, I, I gotta get a closer close up for this one. Jimny for scale. Something is living in there. Look at, look at the size of that spider hole. 
Oh, he's already he's already in it. And if you notice the consist, oh look at that back tire pulling that web. If you notice the consistency of the web, most of the black widows have been eradicated, but there's definitely still some out here. So we've got that. That's just a squirrel hole, and then over there we've got a spider hole. So. Sultan's Curse is dangerous and filled with living things. An option. Last up in the options is this guy. I kind of just call it a teardrop because if you were to look at it from above, it looks like a teardrop. It was built here because there's an olive tree. And this is where all the tires went. There's like Gotta get rid of them somehow. So this place is sketchy. I haven't had an event out here in a while. Uh, it would definitely take some raking and brooming to get through the spider webs. I'm hoping the 1080 is just picking up the ropes of spider webs covering everything here. Because, but this is a decent filming venue because we're still here, we're moving towards lun luncheon. And uh, we've got the shade of this delightful tree of heaven. So as long as we've got shade, we can manage out here because it will stay under, you know, 105. So here's the final option. Let's see if I can get one, one nice perf perfect cinematic roll here. Yeah. So there's your final option for venue. So by all means, holler out what you'd like to see. I might, uh, I will go so far as to, if you've watched this video, then go check the community posts. I will have a poll. I will put up a poll as I think that's probably an easier method of tracking than any other. So here we are. Oh, sounds like the fella needs a little more. Well, he's, he's probably completely tangled in spider webs at this point. He needs some more on the drive shafts. I think he's squeaking along here. Oh yeah, he's got a good squeak. It occurs to me that the, uh, you know, the covered bridge, which I'm pretty proud of, it's not really, like, it's a bridge. It connects obstacle sections, but it's not really part of anything. This is as, this is as in-depth as I can get uh, driving and filming, guys. So, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to... I want to preemptively thank you all for voting. Because, uh, you know, I'm putting it in y'all's in y'all's hands. Look at this. This is, this is, I'm almost doing it. I'm almost doing it. The best part is, I'm using a fluid head video tripod, is what I'm holding in my right hand, and attempting to drive, driving courtesy, this is, this is how you do it. This is how, if you have monster hands, this is, this is how you drive. You get your Kimbro. Can I, can I do it? Can I do this? I'm, I'm not a, nobody stops me from using a reverse if I want to use one. So I, again, thank you for voting ahead of time. But hey, vote, comment, do it all. Do it all. And uh, we'll see what I can think of to, uh, do next. I'm going to be cleaning spider webs out of this guy for like for like 20 minutes. Look at oh, look at look at that one. It's, it's delicious. So again, thanks y'all for watching everybody. Have a, have a good weekend. Go out and get some crawling. Um, and uh, we do all, including this little guy. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.